<clears throat> first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I'm going to talk uh, about a special model development. Uh, as uh, Janos mentioned, it's uh, on the uh, side uh, uh, voters of our uh, common uh, topic. But uh, let me start with some uh, introduction on, uh, on uh, hemodialysis or uh, the kidney uh, problems. First of all, I have to say I'm not a clinician and I'm not a kidney specialist, but I uh, have my information from the clinician colleagues. So there is a problem that a number of medical uh, conditions can play a role in the development of acute and chronic kidney disease. Uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, alone, in 2014, 52 billion dollars were spent uh, for this uh, purpose. We don't have such uh, good statistics in Hungary, but at least one million people suffer from chronic kidney disease, and it requires uh, a solution. And uh, a solution is that extracorporeal treatment uh, procedures are utilized, mainly for uh, renal uh, Replacement, uh, replacement therapies, just like hemofiltr uh, hemofiltration, hemodialysis, or hemodiafiltration, or CAPD. And for other purposes, other treatments are also used uh, as extracorporeal treatments, as uh, hemoperfusion, ultrafiltration in resistance uh, edema, and FPSA uh, before uh, level replacement. And... Uh, all uh, is based uh, on uh, a simple things, uh, basically, uh, the dialysis. And uh, the dialysis uh, uh, procedure, the essence is the dialysis membrane. This is basically a semi-permeable membrane. It has two sides. And uh, semi-permeable means that uh, it doesn't uh, uh, allow uh, large molecules, doesn't allow cells. Uh, the main purpose is that toxic uh, compounds uh, are uh, uh, filtered out, just like uh, uremic toxins and other, other toxins. And for that, there are two sites. On the blood side, uh, this, uh, there is a relatively high uh, speed of dialysis. In patients, it's 200 to 400 milliliters per minute. And on the other side, uh, there is the dialysis uh, fluid. Uh, you will see it's very special. It's composed of sterile water, and uh, the composition is very similar to plasma. And, uh, of course, it's uh, run by a higher speed and takes away uh, the dialyzed uh, toxic substances. Uh, what are the types of dialysis membranes? Uh, first, uh, uh, what is the most common and first was used, the regenerated cellulose membrane. But then later on, other membranes uh, came into the market, uh, cellulose acetate, polyacrylonitrite, polysulfone. Uh, currently, polysulfone is one of the uh, most popular ones. It comes with different pore sizes, and uh, polypropylene, which has a higher transmitting uh, capacity. Here is, for example, uh, the difference between cellulose and synthetic membranes. Uh, in the membrane, there are such uh, small capillaries, and the capillary diameter in cellulose membrane uh, in dry conditions is 8 micrometer, and it can uh, swell to uh, two, uh, 20 micrometer. And uh, in the polysulfone membrane, this uh, measure is uh, 40 micrometer. And here, here is the dialysis de uh, device. I don't want to go into details, only to say that there are, there are different protocols. Uh, the basic dialysis protocol is just... Uh, the hemodialysis, when, when the concentration gradient uh, gives the force, which uh, uh, removes the toxic substances, but uh, also in uh, more, uh, nowadays, maybe in all uh, uh, novel or modern machines, there is also a, a HDF, a hemodia filtration fi uh, filter. Then you can uh, apply pressure, and under this pressure, uh, these toxic uh, substances are filtered out. So it helps, it's another protocol. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, water, uh, pure water is the essence. It's, uh, there is a water purification system uh, which is based on reverse osmosis uh, and also uh, this, uh, the special uh, filters. And it takes, uh, takes uh, water from the line 
and uh, uh, it makes uh, clean water, and then from this clean uh, sterile water, it composes the, the dialysate uh, fluid. Okay, so the problems are that there are uh, dialysis reactions in the, clin uh, uh, in the clinicum, and uh, first of all, because uh, during dialysis there are many procedures, they use ethylene uh, oxide, formaldehyde for sterilizations, or medications for the patients, erythropoietin or intravenous iron or heparin. This could make a reaction, first of all. Uh, another one is the, the dialysis membrane itself can uh, 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 promote uh, precipitation, for example, the polyacrylonitrial uh, uh, membrane, which is uh, widely used, uh, has a surface charge, and uh, as uh, you know, it can make complement activation. I will talk about more about complement activation because it's a common thing uh, during uh, these dialysis reactions. So first, uh, for, f there are two kinds of uh, reactions uh, during the dialysis. One is the, the so-called A-type reaction, which is IG-mediated, and you can see it in the f uh, uh, early on uh, during the, the treatment. And uh, here are uh, what happens. And uh, here are the symptom symptoms. And the B-type, uh, so-called complement-mediated, IgG-mediated reaction uh, in clini uh, clinical situation comes uh, later. Uh, what other complications can uh, come from these uh, uh, dialysis reactions? Incompatibility uh, in patients like inflammatory thrombosis reactions and fibrosis. And like I said, during hemodialysis, the complement activation, uh, it, uh, they could measure 3HA peaks in the first 10-15 uh, minutes and uh, uh, C5B9 formation in later stages. And especially for polysulfone, it can uh, activate uh, the platelets uh, due to these uh, GP2A3B receptors and also due to poor uh, structure, uh, so-called backfiltration can occur, but also different proteins like fecalin 2 uh, may be bound to the membrane and causes complement activation, or the mannose uh, binding lactin and also this fecalin 2 protein can bind to the membrane and it could activate the lactin pathway and also polysulfur membrane absorb a factor H and clustering and this could affect the alternative pathway. So there are many uh, interactions. And now just very briefly about CARPA because Janos mentioned and also later you can hear about this. So this is the complement activation related uh, pseudoallergy and we know that this is not IG E, uh, mediated and it comes uh, upon an infusion, so therefore it's called an infusion uh, reaction. And like Janos uh, say, the incidence, the overall incidence is not so low, relatively high, but uh, lateral cases are not so high, but still 0.1% is, is uh, more than acceptable. And many nanoparticles uh, can uh, make it. And also the symptoms, I'm not going into detail, I just want to emphasize that uh, when we come to animal models, the animal models show the same reactions as, as we saw in the clinical setting. And as Janos men mentioned, we use mostly the pig, the porcine model, which is a, a hypersensitive uh, VT model. And this reflects better the behavior of, hi of hypersensitive humans. So therefore, we use this model. Uh, again, not going to the detail, I just mentioned two things that we measure uh, the pulmonary arterial pressure changes and also the thromboxane, two, uh, thromboxane B2 changes because these two parameters uh, are our markers for, for CARPA. But we measure other parameters you will hear about later in detail. So uh, the idea was that let's combine uh, the porcine CARPA model, which is a sensitive hypersensitivity model, with hemodialysis because in, clini uh, in clinical situations, there are those reports about, uh, about uh, um, occurrence, uh, which is very similar to our uh, CARPA results. So let's see whether the, 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 the cause is CARPA or not for these uh, reactions. And uh, here is our model. So we wanted to develop, first of all, a model where we combine the porcine uh, CARPA, pig uh, CARPA, with this hemodialysis. So here is our hemodialysis machine. And also, like I said, uh, clear water should be uh, produced on site. 
with a reverse osmosis-based uh, filter. And here is our experimental set uh, setup, quite complicated, because <laughs> this is the carpa side, this is the hemolysis side. And you can see that with a double lumen catheter, we take blood uh, from the animal. And here is an extracorporeal loop. It, it mimics uh, exactly the clinical, human clinical situation. There is just one difference that uh, uh, the, inf the dialysis speed is a little bit uh, lower. Here we use 150 milliliter per minute uh, for the dialysis, and we use a one-hour dialysis. So we try to follow the human uh, protocol here. And uh, I can show you some uh, uh, preliminary resu uh, results now at this uh, stage. So uh, I sh I'm showing you the pulmonary arterial pressure changes. Uh, very surprisingly, we didn't see too two big changes during dialysis. We expected to see big changes because the reports, the clinical reports, were all about the dialysis itself. However, what surprised us, that at the end of the dialysis, there is a, a reinfusion when extracorporeal uh, blood is given back uh, to the animal. And here, we, in every case, uh, saw a pulmonary artery pressure elevation. Not very big, but 50%. It's uh, relatively... Uh, good change, and, and uh, we see in every case. And after that, we use zymosan, which is our positive control, and we always saw uh, a zymosan reaction. And also, in, uh, um, uh, we just uh, selected uh, three, the three most sensitive. They are, these are really not big changes, but something happens uh, also in, in, uh, during, during the dialysis, but mostly what we see uh, here is the uh, during reinfusion. And here are the thromboxane uh, data. Uh, also, uh, this parallels totally with the uh, PAP data that during dialysis, not much change. Maybe a little bit, I'll show it later. But during the uh, blood reinfusion, we, we see uh, changes. And also, uh, in three cases, there is some, some small, small elevation. And we also measured uh, complement. Unfortunately, we were not very uh, successful with this, but we, we used a special heat high cut spore sign uh, uh, C5A ELISA, and we see, clearly see some changes sometimes in some peaks during uh, dialysis and in the reinfusion period, but unfortunately yet we, we, uh, we didn't get any conclusive data, so we need to continue uh, with this measurement. So what are our conclusions? So... Uh, X may provide a model for uh, dialyzer reactions using uh, pulmonary arterial pressure and thromboxane uh, endpoints. The return of the extracorporeal blood to the circulation seems critical. It induces pathophysiological changes, triggering thromboxane release and the consequence pulmonary hypertension. Complement activation is likely to occur in the extracorporeal circulation. But measurements uh, of, of uh, C5A by this high cut spore sign ELISA, however, may not yield conclusive data uh, so far, and the reason is unknown. But uh, we can uh, say that the model may be useful to clarify the mechanism of hypersensitivity reactions during uh, hemodialysis. So uh, thanks uh, for uh, my colleagues in these studies, and thank you for your attention. Take the microphone over there. Uh, who will um, 